Hello, I'm Tom Williams for The Saint. I'm joined by a Director of Education candidate, Alice Bounce. Now, Alice, can you tell me a bit more about you? I'm Alice, I'm from Aberdeenshire in Scotland, but my parents now live in Orkney, so kind of from both. <laughs> I study modern history, which I'm in the third year of my degree here, but I came to study English and decided modern history was definitely what I was more passionate about. And yeah, that's me. Okay, let's get right into the manifesto. Okay. Uh, you said that you're going to review class sizes. Now, in an interview with the principal, the principal suggested that she was exploring the possibility of raising the number of students to 10,000. What is your response to that? So I think that, especially at postgraduate level, there is going to be problems that are caused by increased class sizes. In my role as history president, I've seen that already, where some courses which have originally been a lot smaller, a bit more tutor-specific, one-to-one time, are no longer like that. The university advertises this as a really good thing about a lot of master's courses and also the small tutorial classes for undergrads. So I want to work with both students and staff to make sure that that isn't being ignored, that this core thing about the university that really gets a lot of people to come here isn't just then being ignored and getting more students in. So I want to see what the problems are, how that can work, whether it's working with postgrads to figure out, well, you all study a similar topic, maybe you could all be with a tutor who has that similar topic. So even if it's not one-to-one, -one, it could be a group of all similar interests rather than just, oh, nobody knows what's going on, throw everyone to one tutor and they're all unrelated. So I want to work with people to figure out what those problems can be. Okay. Uh, another manifesto point you've got is uh, setting up a stall to donate textbooks. Why, when people have paid for their textbooks, are they going to donate them for free? Is there going to be some kind of incentive, or is it just going to be charitable giving? See, I came up with this idea because I have a lot of textbooks that I've been trying to sell, which just nobody's buying. A lot of them aren't they're not required for modules, they're not necessarily textbooks that you need, but there might just be textbooks that you want. I know that a lot of people do spend a lot of money on textbooks, so not everybody's going to be interested in this, but maybe we could work up some sort of incentive, or we might get enough donations for each school that that's not necessary. Are you going to be handing out these textbooks for free, or are you going to be charging students a subsidised rate? So I was thinking kind of maybe an exchange program, so people put in a textbook, take out a textbook. So you can maybe put in a textbook about gender in the 1500s if you study history, for example, take out one on the Nazis. But that might not work, so it's an in-progress idea. Yeah, I mean, the exchange, one book's value versus another is something to be considered there. Um, will you increase the number of internships, or will you work towards that with the Career Centre? Definitely. I think this goes with my Career Centre pop-up stalls idea in my manifesto, which is basically just kind of an idea that the Career Centre is already having, so I know that this could definitely work. Just having these stalls in schools that are willing to join in with this programme, and they can give immediate information, say, oh, you need to see this Careers Advisor, or, oh, I definitely know there's an internship available for that kind of interest in the Career Centre at the moment. So maybe work in the Career Centre to advertise the internships they do have, because I know they have a lot of great programmes and also maybe working with alumni as a possibility to kind of get more internships going or work shadowing sort of ideas. Mm. So advertising these internships through the pop-up stores? Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Uh, will there be more work to promote them online? Oh yeah, yeah, I think I want to work on a union website as well, have a section for a lot of different things, but this could be something that could be on the union website, which kind of needs a bit of a revamp anyway, to see like, oh, that's a great internship, I'd love to go for that, I'd never have heard of that otherwise. Uh, internships are a bit of a hot topic at the moment. Obviously there's this debate of paid versus unpaid internships. Yeah. What's your stance on that? I think it is a problem having unpaid internships. I know I've experienced this myself where there's a lot of internships, especially in London, which I would have loved to have gone for, but I just can't afford to live in London without getting paid for six weeks. I know that isn't a problem for a lot of people, and so unpaid internships shouldn't just be ignored completely, but I think that there is a lot to say for funding that is available in the Career Centre that, again, not everybody knows about for things like unpaid internships, particularly for internships that are in St Andrews as well. You've talked about also improving transparency for school presidents. Can you elaborate more on that? So I'd like to have school presidents and class reps, really. I'd like to have a system where everybody knows what's going on, not just the school presence, but with kind of what I'm doing as well. So I'd like to build up a community between the class reps and the school presence so the class reps feel more involved for a start, so they know what they can actually do, 
get more involved with what the school presidents are doing and then have a system where they can kind of relate that back to everyone else. So whether that's again a bit on the school website, a bit on the union website where school presidents can update what they're working on, class reps can chip in, maybe have a weekly email system if that works best in a school, but somewhere how have more of a transparent system where people go, so that's what class rep is for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, obviously the association candidacy, they've got five people running. There's yeah. only two of you. But what makes you stand out as the best candidate? I think Chris is a really lovely person. He's a really nice guy. I've got to know him a lot over the past few days and I think we get on really well, which is nice. But I think what I have that Chris maybe doesn't have is that I know this system. I've been a class rep, I've been a school president for the past year, I've worked with Zach really closely because I've been really interested in this role and I know that I could do a good job with this role just by what I do know, the experiences I've had. I've represented over a thousand students to quite a large staff body in history and I know that I would be really great at transferring those skills onto a bigger staff body. I wouldn't be afraid to speak up on university court because I know there's a lot of issues that maybe I would have spoken up about that Zach maybe didn't feel that he could and I know that I would do a really great job with this. So that's your main criticism of Zach would be or is there another one? I think that I think Zach's done an amazing job this year. He's if you look at his manifesto from last year he's basically done everything and more. I worked really closely with him this year and I think he's genuinely really great at what he's doing. That would be the only thing I would say is that I would maybe want to push back in what the students are saying in some issues like some of the recent issues that have affected a lot of students where they haven't known what's going on and they felt that the unions kind of turn their backs to them a little bit and they're representing the uni more than the students maybe. Okay. Now one of the issues that Zach has faced this year has been that of lecture capture. Yes. What's your stance on lecture capture? I think that that's really a school specific issue, that some schools will have different problems with why they maybe don't feel that they want to use lecture capture. I know that IR for example, they feel that it's going to be a legal issue, there's a lot of sensitive material, they don't necessarily want to put that online. So I think really sitting down with the directors of teaching, finding out right, why is this a problem if it is a problem, is it a lack of training, because I know that there's training in Cape Cod available if it is, and just kind of speaking to staff to find out what they're saying about this lecture capture thing because it really has become the kind of hot topic that gets brought up at every SSC meeting and the staff all go, oh no, we don't want that, but find out why they don't necessarily want that. Okay. Uh, what would be your key policy from your manifesto, the one that you would be most happy with, have you achieved it in a year's time? I think, oh, that's, that's a hard question because I want to do everything. Um, I think the academic representation is so important to me because I know that this university is the best in the UK for academic representation and I really want to work to maintain that really high standard so that would be working so closely with the school presidents, getting the class reps more involved, having this community there, so just having the students less apathetic towards academic representation because it does sound very boring unless you've got a problem but it is a really good thing to be part of and I would just like people to be more involved with that I think. How are you going to improve involvement per se? I think this could work well with the transparency of the system, so knowing what's going on, knowing what everybody's doing, knowing what's going on in the university that I may be involved with or that I am sitting on a meeting for that's relevant and things like that just so people aren't apathetic because they feel involved. Okay. Is there anything else from your manifesto that particularly stands out that you're really proud of? Um, I'm really proud of my idea to streamline the exam and coursework feedback. Mm -hmm. So I know that a lot of schools have really good feedback on their coursework and that they have like a, a graph to fill out that staff fill out and they say this is these three key things that you did well, these are things you didn't do so well and like this is why you've got on your mark. Or some people get a sentence on an essay or a piece of coursework or a report. So I think that there needs to be a system in place where everyone's the same so that it's not that like some schools they know exactly what they've done wrong and some schools they're like well I've no idea. So you're talking so I think about that's important. standardizing feedback then. Yeah. How how would it be standardized? Like what is the quota? So I think talking to each director teaching again to find out what their system is. Because I know some systems only because I've been in those schools and I know some that haven't worked so well, some that have. But talking to all the directors of teaching to find out, so what do you do? Do you find it works well? Do you get a lot of good like good second coursework feedback and things like that to find out, oh that's a good idea, or oh, maybe we can incorporate that to try and find 
the best of all schools to get one really good feedback form. So this would be one comprehensive idea as opposed to school specific? Ideally, but then I recognise that there might be a lot of schools where that's, that can't work and that some schools do have to have their own way of feeding back. Sciences and arts are not the same thing, they shouldn't be put on the same form just because I want to put, make it across the schools. So I think that yeah, definitely speaking to people, finding out maybe there's one for these three schools that can work or maybe there's one for everyone or maybe not everyone. So finding out really the best way to go about that. Uh, your opposite member, Christopher Wilde, has said that he's going to be meeting with all the class reps, 300 and so of them. Uh, what are your plans for discussions with class reps, feedback, stuff like that? I think, yeah, I think that's a really good manifesto point. I didn't necessarily put it in just because I didn't think that had to be said almost. I thought, well, yeah, I would ideally love to do that as part of my job sort of thing. So meeting with all the academic representatives is so important because that is the people who are speaking to the students most. They know what the problems are in each school. So I think that would be vital, trying to speak to all of them. Okay, thank you very much, Alice. That's about all we have time for. Great. Thank you for watching.